Welcome to today's Junior's Lesson. My name is Teacher Kit Me, and today we're going to be learning something new, but we need to do a little recap from last week. Hmm, what did we learn last week? Oh, I heard someone saying about ungrateful, yes. Something about grumbling, we heard a lot of grumbling last week. And something about grace, yes. I heard something like that and I'm going to tell you what it is. Last week, we saw how the people of Israel were grumbling against God. Yes, they grumbled about not having food to eat or water to drink. What did God do? Well, God showed grace to them. Now, God wanted to teach these people whom he had saved something really important. Yes, the title for this week is We Are Saved So We Obey. Let's see what happened in chapter 19 to 20 of Exodus. The people of Israel have now arrived at the wilderness of Sinai. God had a big event calling Moses to give him very important instruction. He told Moses to tell the Israelites in chapter 19 verse 4 to 6. You saw what I did in Egypt, and you know how I brought you here to me, just as a mighty eagle carries its young. Now, if you will faithfully obey me, you will be my very own people. The whole world is mine, but you will be my holy nation and serve me as priests. The Israelites must remember what God has done for them. He has saved them from slavery in Egypt. And then God also told Moses that he would like to meet them all. Kids, do you think they can just meet God without preparing themselves? No. So in verse 14, it says, After Moses went down the mountain, he gave orders for the people to wash their clothes and make themselves acceptable to worship God. They had to prepare themselves before meeting God. Now kids, why do you think this is so? It's because God is teaching them about himself. He is holy and they are not. God then told the people of Israel the Ten Commandments. And it goes from Exodus chapter 20 verse 2 to 17. It says, I am the Lord your God, the one who brought you out of Egypt where you were slaves. Do not worship any God except me. Do not make idols that look like anything in the sky or on earth or the ocean under the earth. Don't bow down and worship idols. I am the Lord your God and I demand all your love. If you reject me, I will punish your families for three or four generations. But if you love and obey my laws, I'll be kind to your families for thousands of generations. Do not misuse my name. I am the Lord your God, and I will punish anyone who misuses my name. Remember that the Sabbath day belongs to me. You have six days when you can do work. But the seventh day of each week belongs to me, your God. No one is to work on that day. Not you, your children, your slaves, your animals, or the foreigners who live in your towns. In six days, I made the sky, the earth, the oceans, and everything in them. But on the seventh day, I rested. That's why I made the Sabbath a special day that belongs to me. Respect your father and your mother, and you will live long in the land that I'm giving you. Do not murder. Be faithful in marriage. Do not steal. Do not tell lies about others. 
Do not want anything that belongs to someone else. Don't want anyone's house, wife or husband, slaves, oxen, donkeys or anything else. Wow, that's a really long list. Kids, think with me. Why must they be holy? Well, because they are God's people. That's right. Every time I ask, why must they be holy? You say, because they are God's people. They must remain faithful to God. God has kept his covenant with them up till today. Their only task is to obey him. This means they should listen to him and do what he tells them to do. The commandments are meant to teach his people to live like his people. Israel was God's people before the law was given. And it's because they are God's people, that's why the law was given to instruct them on how to live. Well, the question is, why must they be holy? Because they are God's people. Now, let me give you an example. You have this cute cat called Meow Meow Cat here. And as her owner, you want her to listen to you. Actually, you found her in a drain and you took pity on her. Now that you have taken her into your home and made her your pet, you want the best for her. Would you still like her to eat rubbish food by the drain? Uh-uh, no. You want to give her good proper cat food, which are really yummy. Mmm. You want her to eat those food that you provided for her so that she can stay healthy as a cat. Now, God gave these people the commandments for them to live as his people. God wants a holy people for himself. God has been faithful to his promises. He kept his covenant with Abraham. After all that he's, he has done, from saving them from slavery in Egypt, bringing them to a new land, they should thank him in the way they live. They should want to make God happy with them. That means listening to what he says and doing what he asks. Now, if we say we are God's children, we need to listen to him. We must obey him. All of us Christians are to image God in being obedient to him. We have been saved by God from our sins. We need to strive to live how God wants us to. That means doing everything he tells us to. Now, again, the question is, why must they be holy? Because they are God's people. But what about us? Why must we be holy? Because we are God's people. That's right. So kids, let's thank God for what we have learned today. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for teaching us today. Thank you for saving us from our sins. We pray that we will learn to live like how you tell us to. May we always remember that you have saved us to be your people. We pray that we will obey you because this is what you want from us as your people. Help us to always obey you even when we find it very difficult. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Kids, I'll see you next week. Please do the Junior's Worksheet and then ask your parents to check and go through the answers with you. And after that, you can do the prop. See you. Bye-bye.